I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. And welcome to A Whole Lot of Craft. Today on A Lot of Craft episode 67, we're going to learn how to turn silk hankies into usable yarn. Join us! in August. Summertime, summertime. Yes. yes, starting to wind down. Starting to wind down, drinking up for the last few days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I haven't done anything specifically. Like We haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done any big trips. But that's, you know, it's okay. What do you think we're going to do? Who is? Just hanging out, being cool. <laughs> or not. <laughs> You're always the case, cool, baby. Too, yeah. <laughs> cool in attitude or cool in temperature? <laughs> well, today, <laughs> the not the temperature. <laughs> no. And, and someone warm. said to me today, it's supposed to be humid like this till through Tuesday. And I said, what day is it? Yeah. And they said Wednesday. <laughs> you know, and I was like, wait, that doesn't even make sense to no. me. I know. I, the days just go and shoo. Next thing you know, it's September. And we'll be like, where's the heat? Right. Yeah, we'll be crying. Yeah. It's too cold. Not really. <laughs> Not in September. Not in September, no. But there is something fun about putting on all those cozy sweaters mm -hmm. and everything. Are you, Sweater weather. Are you gearing up to do anything? Um, well, so so my Rhinebeck plans have changed a bit. Oh, okay. Um, the girls I'm going, I usually go up with decided not to go this year. Oh. So, and that's okay because it's a big expense and sometimes you can't, you just can't do it and that's alright. So I'm talking with my mom to see if she wants to go. That's insane. Of course, if you want to go. <laughs> Let me the uh, it's in October, so there's a while yet to have to look up the specifics. But um, so, of course, I'm planning a sweater for that. Of course. Because you have to have a Rhinebeck sweater. Um, and it will be bulky weight because that will go the fastest. Um, but I'm predicting, because I'm making a bulky weight sweater, that it will be a warm year. <laughs> and it will be 70 and I won't be able to wear it. Right. Whereas last year, I didn't bring a coat. <laughs> And it was like snowing, literally it was snowing, <laughs> <laughs> and I wore every single layer I brought <laughs> all day long. So maybe this year we can plan some places in between. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's so I, I have a plan. It just is not started yet, along with my other multitude of plans I always have ready in my head. Nice. Um, I did pick out the yarn and the pattern for the two younger kids' birthday sweaters. Wow, you're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. So, and one of them's already been bought. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to kind of keep things going because I've really been slow. I feel like my, my knitting pace has kind of dropped a bit this summer. And maybe it's because I'm using tiny yarn. Um, maybe it's because start. you have a family. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> no! They don't count in this knitting universe when they I can do anything like that. Time. Yeah. No, well, I, I think sometimes I forget how long it actually takes to do things. And I've caught myself thinking, oh, I'm, I need a hat for that thing tomorrow. I'll just make it. You know, like, no. <laughs> it's going to take me way longer than one night to make a hat, <laughs> most of the time, depending on how big it is. But it, that's, you know, sometimes I think I need a TARDIS. And, <laughs> you know, have you done that before? Oh, yeah. I can get this done in time. Yeah. All the time I do it. <laughs> All the time. And then I suddenly come to realize, hey, I can't. Yeah. There's other things going on besides just what I would like to craft. Yes. Yeah. So. That's why we all need a personal assistant. Because the personal assistant <laughs> is the one who's like, so you realize that you can't get all those things done yeah. in that time frame. Yeah. Which one are you actually going to do? Or a boss. Or a nanny. Or a nanny. To kind of take up some of the other stuff. Because, you know, the house needs some help and the dinner has to be cooked in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the children need to be reminded to take baths and... <laughs> baths! <laughs> Did they go it's swimming summer. today? Right, right. Did it rain today? That's they true. Were in it? That's true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so what have you been working on? Um, well, for me... Uh, oh, I made this. 
Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Did you go see the Ghostbusters I, I movie? I did, and I was a complete dork, and I was, took a picture of myself with this in front of the ghost <laughs> sign. Was it good? It was really good. It was cute. Yeah. Yeah, I was impressed. Um, it was a little bit spicier than I think we expected for... We brought the kids. Okay. Assuming that it was going to be like the old one. And it was a little bit more on the edge. Than <laughs> so keep that in mind if you have sensitive kids. Mine were okay. And it wasn't so much scary as it was just there was a little bit of... There were a lot of innuendos that might go over heads but might not. And some of them... Right. I don't know. Today, our kids haven't seen the original Ghostbusters oh. because we're a little concerned about that whole like him being that weird thing, oh. you know, and her rising out of the bed, and everything. We're like, well, I don't yeah. know, but, you know. So that that had that whole thing going on for it. Yeah, this one wasn't as scary that way, and I won't give away a lot. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it was worth going to see. And, and after it all, I think that most of the stuff did go over the heads of. So that's what I hoped for. <laughs> but I liked it. And I liked the positive female heroine aspect of it all. I thought that was really cool. cool. Yeah. So Did I'm, you make one for everyone or just, no, just me? Because I don't crochet that's very well. That's so cute. But this is my um, team unity project for Nerdopolis. So um, there, shout out to Team Pi. Every once in a while I'm going to give a shout out. So this is, we're all making one. And they all turned out different, which is kind of fun. Oh, so, cool. So I did do that, um, and it actually looks like something, so that's good news. And um, I'm continuing to chug along on the doodler. Nice. Oh, and that thing is so beautiful. Yeah. I can't wait to see when it's done. I can't even open it up because I'm in the middle of a row. The rows are like 500 stitches long right now, so it takes me a really long time to get through them. So I kind of just stop where I have to stop. When my hands get tired, I just stop. And, but it, it's cool. Everything about it is really cool. I have not been frustrated or bored by it. It just is very big. That is so, awesome. Yeah, and it's got this modified feather and fan at the top, which is really cool. There, if I stretch it out, you can see it. Mm -hmm. It completely follows the curves of the previous piece. And Stephen West is, he's a genius when it comes to putting together things that you would never expect to work. Suddenly he's just like, poof, these stitches go here, and those go there, and they just work. I don't know how he does it, but so just yeah, have it. he does. So I'm still working on that, and so it's, it's getting there. Cool. Hopefully, I'll be done in the next week or so. So, how about you? Anything new? I did a lot of painting. I went on vacation, and I did painting. And I did a page oh, yeah, every for every day that I was on vacation. Nice. Well, it's sort of multimedia. So I did watercolor and. This is the cocktail napkin from the restaurant oh, we eat cool. at, and I glued it on. I kind of smushed it so it fit. And, and, I thought that uh, was a motorcycle. <laughs> that's, that's, so not, that's cool. Yeah, so these are kind of hard to see, and I'm not finished with them, obviously. Oh, and you've written little stuff on it. Yeah, the stuff that we did each day, and this one I didn't see yet, all of it, or I don't know if I'm going to do paint or what. So this one has a map of where we went, and like, uh -huh. the boats we saw, and the cute little cottages. Oh, this is the day we went to the beach. So I was painting the shells and the seaweed I found. And this one is blank. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do anything that day. <laughs> that was the day you slept it, all day. This is the the day we went to see another base one. Oh, okay. So it's all different directions. So I, it's not done. I have I have a whole basket full of like different things I collected. Oh my goodness. The when I was there, like places we ate and stuff, and like something was wrapped in this, I'll take pieces yeah. of that. And I'm hoping I get it done because you know, once you get home, suddenly and all the time it's not your own. Like you it's said. not. We went away. It was just my husband and I, and it, we don't have a TV in our bedroom. There's a reason for that because neither of us would ever <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> but like the first night, I just we were in bed watching TV, and I was painting, and I was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> Because I would never do this I at know, all. I know, I know. So it was so fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of this page. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, so that's what I've been, uh, that's what I've been working on. And then will you put them into a scrapbook, or are you going to thin them? Or? That's the idea. I mean, I haven't gotten that far. I want to do some more. I don't want to put out some pictures. I was actually thinking what I might do is take bigger sheets then and mount this on with some pictures from that day. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And make it into a book or something. I have about a thousand ideas. Yeah. 
Let's see if we even get past this. <laughs> Accountability people. Everybody start writing soon. How's your book? How's your book? I know. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, there's so many other things to do. And yeah. People to take care of and dishes to do. So I know. Yeah, it's it's hard to come back from something like that and to get back into normal life and put away the stuff that you want. I mean, sometimes I, I admit I'm a little jealous of those who don't have children because it does take up a lot of time and, and then that time is your own. Like the extra time is for you. Right. right. But at the same time, if I didn't have children, I think that I would be very sad. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and actually I'm starting to have glimpses of the future mm -hmm. and that's a little sad too yeah because we came back and we had a day with no kids because they didn't come back yet from where they were coming from and part of me was like this is so cool and part of me is like this is going to be my life forever <laughs> in seven years <laughs> they're never no. coming back you know and i'm like what am i going to do all day I'm gonna just, what am i, I going to do <laughs> <laughs> the joys of being able to stay home with your children will eventually go away when the children do. <laughs> yes. So I'm on a bittersweet edge here with having a teenager mm -hmm. and seeing like they're being independent. We can go out, like you were saying, yeah. we can go out for a quick meal without them. But now it's like, oh, we're we're coming down the other side where pretty soon, yeah, I'm not going to see them at all. Yeah. And more stuff. We, we I even find that now, like they, there's things they want to do. At least my oldest, she wants to do more things without us than she wants to do with us. Oh yes. You know, she's got these ideas and stuff that she's got. You know, these people I want to see and these places I want to go. And if it wasn't for the fact that I still need to get her there, she'd be, you know, she'd have. A, and I remember that's how I was. I had a social calendar and I was gone all day and it was fine. But. It's different from the other, and I used to feel like I should talk to my mom and be like, hey, uh, what was that like? Right. <laughs> I don't remember being, you know, I, I you don't think about it when you're a kid. It's just, you're growing and you're learning right. and you're, anyway, this is a crafting podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Not a parenting podcast. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it um, is. I can show what, you back. I can show what they, what my children have been working on, oh, and okay. then we'll segue Let, back. Let's yes. go back. <laughs> So back on the road. Segway to crafting. This is what the 10 year old made this week. Oh, she, they did that in art class yeah. this year. Well, she had extra pieces that she found when she was cleaning out her backpack to start getting ready for fall. <laughs> so and funny. so she made another little, she, she used up the rest of my tape <laughs> and made a little piece. But it's very, very cute. Yeah. It is very yeah, my cute. son, when, he, when they did that in art class, he came started doing the same thing. Yeah. Mom, do you have magazines? Do I have magazines? I know. <laughs> do you have magazines I can cut up? Do I have magazines you can cut uh, up? I have like way one. too many magazines. Yeah. yeah. So she did that and she wants to she wants to um, montage it so it all stays and then she can put flowers in it. Oh, that's cute. She wants to do. I don't know if she's going to plant something or just use those leaves. Oh. So that's really she cute. did that. Yes. And then the They've all been knitting with me this summer, which is really cool. Even oh, you know, the little guy, and he's he gets frustrated easily, and he immediately takes this thing out. He's like, "That's it." You know, he's a major perfectionist, so I've been working him through. It's our right do you to need, make mistakes. Do you need a few minutes with me? <laughs> he might. It's funny how I would never expect you know him. I would never expect him to be a perfectionist, but as soon as he makes a mistake, oh, I failed. You off the needles and then it's he's, he's ripping it out. So I I'm working with that. <laughs> let's let's leave them on the needles and fix the one little thing you did right. before. Um, but we're getting he's getting better. But my oldest, because she got a phone, had to make a bag to go with the phone. That's really cute. So she she designed it herself. Wow. She's going to write up the pattern. Nice. And she's looking for test knitters. <laughs> so I got a, a budding entrepreneur here, but it's totally cute. It's got a little pocket back here. She said that's for um, like your earbuds, if you want to put that in there. And then inside she attached, I'll just put it inside out here. She made two little pockets so you can put some money in if you're going to the store. Nice. And um, Very thoughtful. Yeah. And she did a really nice job. She, she double knitted it, I think, actually, and then seamed it at the base. She's, when she grabs onto a concept of something, her mind just goes, I can do all these things with it. And so this is what came out of it. And I'm really proud of her. She's, she twisted her own strands to make the straps up here. Um, so they're 
actually felting, which is really nice. But they're just, wow. she just twisted them and then back on themselves like a telephone cord. Um, and there's her phone case. She can carry it with her. That's really cool. Yeah. So if anybody nice wants job. to help her out, so I'm encouraging her to write it down. So hopefully in the next little bit. Yes. Yeah. Be available. But that, yeah. So yeah, we'll let you know when it is. Yeah. On the website. Mm -hmm. On the blog so that people, if you want to test it, yeah, you can get in touch with me and I will let you know all about it. So. That's always that's exciting. Fun. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so that's, I think, all. All that I've been doing. Yeah. But today we're going to, we're going to learn to work with silk hankies, which look very much like a handkerchief, but are completely not. So, and how do you turn them into yarn? That's exciting. Can't wait to see it. All right, come right back. See you soon. So today we're going to look at how to work with silk hankies, and that is what this is right here. Um, my silk hankies are pre-dyed and come from a company called Fabulous Fibers. Um, you can also get them from a number of different distributors and I believe you can also find them undyed um, online. But mine came pre-dyed in this nice little gradient. Um, they come in a three ounce package which is usually enough to make a small scarf or a small shawl. Um, if you wanted to do something bigger than that, like a pair of mittens, probably would take two packages. Also depending on how thinly you draft because we're going to be turning these hankies into this yarn which seems completely strange. <laughs> um, and because it's 100% silk, it reacts much differently than you might expect it to. Um, the silk, when it's, when it's like this, it looks quite wide and fluffy, but when you at work with it, it actually squishes down. So you can almost have to twist your strand to see what it's going to end up looking like, and it gets very, very thin. So, um, like I said, we start with a plain old hanky like this and then you, what you have to do first is separate out one layer. Each layer is actually um, one cocoon from the silkworm which seems a little strange like we're actually working with bug spit here but um, it's very lovely bug spit and um, makes for a beautiful finished project. It's, it's shiny and it's beautiful but there's a lot of edges here. You wouldn't expect so many pieces from this hanky. Like I said before, each of these little layers is one silk cocoon that has been stretched out onto a form. So in order to draft it, you need to find just one layer. And I find it most easy to come in from the corner here and just pull off one of these little ridges. If I was to turn to this side in the brown again, um, you can find them just by teasing out one of these little ridges here. Some sections are easier to find than others, so just play around with it until you find one that works for you. Then you're just going to pull your hanky apart. And as you can see, it's getting really, really thin, almost translucent here. Just pull the whole hanky right off until you have just the one layer. Now, if you notice, it's pulling around a little bit. You do want to exfoliate your hands before you do this because the strands of the silk will catch on any little tiny piece that might be rough. Um, and you'll see that as we draft, it does kind of cling onto things. There's our one translucent piece, and I'll show you how to draft. So I have my silk hanky, and again, we're gonna turn it into this little ball of yarn here. So the first thing you want to do is pick up your hanky and find the center. And then all you're gonna do is poke your fingers through the center and start to stretch. And you pull and pull and pull and pull and pull until kind of moving your hands a little bit until you have a little bit of a ring. Now, you have to decide at this point how thick do you want your yarn to be. Right now, if I look at it, if I were to twist it a little bit, I've got probably a chunky weight. Um, and the more you draft it, just like you do with wool, the thinner it gets. So I'm gonna aim for a sport weight here. And that just means I keep stretching my fiber until I get to about the width I think I'd like. And then you move over to the next section. This is a really big one and you stretch it again, like that. You keep going around, stretching, and your hands have to be far apart. Silk is very long staple, and if you go close together, it's not gonna go anywhere, and you can really yank on it. So you wanna have your hands far apart, 
and stretch. Far apart and draft the pieces. They're gonna slide gently away from each other. And when you finally have gone all the way around the circle and your width or uh, size of your strand looks good, you're gonna find a spot and break the strand in half. You could do that based on color, depending on how you want to knit this up. If you want something that stripes, you might want to always break it so that the stripe or the two colors or the ends are the same. If you want something that's going to be more variegated and you don't care, then break it wherever you'd like. Um, a lot of times I will break it in a part where I went too thin <laughs> because it just seems to lend itself. So I think I'm pretty good here. So I'm just going to go around. Um, this spot looks a little thinner, so I'm just going to break it, keep pulling until it comes apart. And now I have a long strand instead of the, the square. What I like to do now is just kind of smooth it and wrap it around my hand. And that kind of keeps it contained out of the way. It smooths out the fibers a little bit more so that when you go to knit with it, because you're just going to work with it like this in a single, um, it will be nice and smooth for you. And that's all there is to it. And you can start knitting. So this was really cool. Yeah, something different. It is different. So what's the, um, you know, you mentioned a scarf or a glove. Is there anything in particular that this is good for or not good for? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I, I learned somewhere that silk is actually warmer than wool. So I think that you could probably just work with it like you would any single ply and just make it into something. I'm not sure that, um, it's, I mean, it's very soft too, so you could definitely wear it near your neck. I'm not sure I want to do it with a sweater. Right. It take you well, a lot silk of work. is sometimes used in long but, underwear. Yes. Because yeah. it does, I think it wicks water away from your body and that's why you would wear it because then it doesn't keep you cold. Yeah, and it was the original like stocking, soft material was silk, like back okay. in the days when it was, when people made their, you know, made, made their, their stockings. stockings. That, which is probably why they talk about silk stockings. But here, try one. So what made you decide to try this? Like, this isn't a normal thing that I would do. <laughs> I, I like to try new things. Um, and I think I came across a package at a store at some point and it was like, I don't know, $14 or something. It was a very reasonable price. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what I come up with. You see how it's all tangly? How it gets, yeah, I didn't like, actually at first. The strands are really long. It's like spider silk almost. It's kind of fun, but um, yeah, I just like to I just like to play, you know. So, have you made anything with it? I did. I made a scarflet. I don't know if you remember back over in the spring. I made one that was like light blue and like green and pink. And so that was this. It was the same. So I stretch it this far. Yep. And then you have to decide: is this as as like that's going to be the size of your yarn. So do you want it to be that size or do you want it to be thinner? So this might be a good introduction to people who are spinning, right? To get mm -hmm. to realize how thin or thick you can, I mean, it's, it acts different than wool, but it at does. the same time it does act similar in the sense of the, the pulling, when I tried spindling, is that the right word? Spindling? If you're using a spindle. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I did. Yeah. I, to, you know, is as a lot of it was the constant pulling while it was right, spinning, right? What, how you got what you wanted, and this one you're not spinning it, you're just right, you're pulling just it, pulling it, um, which is kind of nice. And I did try spinning it up to see what it would look like to see if it would make a tighter strand or what it would look like plied. And I personally didn't like it. I think this is a really it lends itself to being a rustic, nubbly kind of yarn, and to try to spin it smooth just it made it look uh, worn to me so but you know everybody has their own opinion so you could always try spinning it or applying it with a wool or something like that if you wanted a different texture it lends itself to art yarn mm -hmm. let's see that is there anything else that people do with silk yankees besides knitting them up i'm still attached <laughs> <laughs> i don't know honestly <laughs> i've only seen people like a few have have made 
garments or mittens or you know, little things out of it, use it as a trim. But um, and see, it's kind of cool because you can just start. I'm just going to knit a few and just show you. Yeah. But it's it's very strong. I was yeah, really it's still surprised very strong. how strong it is, and then how soft and shiny and smooth it is <laughs> once you get it undone from the hanging. <laughs> that process is another story. <laughs> But, well, I mean, this is actually just fun, just pulling yeah. it and seeing how thin you can get it. And it is weird to think that it is. This is not hair that's been right taken off like wool. It's right. I am amazed at how long, like how many fibers there actually are in one cocoon. Right, because when you took it off and it's so transparent, it doesn't look like you're going to get much out of it. Right, but you can just keep pulling. You really do. So, and, and it does depend, I mean, you'll get more yardage, obviously, if your yarn is thinner. But, so I'm just, see, I'm just knitting it now. And it makes these nice little stitches. Wow. It gives you a thick and thin fabric. It's not going to be anything uniform by any means. <clears throat> and some of the beauty of it is the longer you work with it, the better you get. So when I was making my little scarflet, the second half actually had way more yardage and it was much more consistent looking than the first half because I got so much better at drafting as I went along. Interesting. So I had some extra whereas I thought, you know, I stopped I stopped and changed to start decreasing. It's a triangle shawl. I started decreasing at the point that I only had half left. And I had extra at the time at the point that they were the same size. So So you just add then another yarn in just like as if you were adding another color? Yep. And these kind of will tangle on each other, so you can take the ends and just kind of twist them together, and they will um, they'll stay, which is really nice. Isn't it fun though? It is. Fun. It is. You have to be you know, the smoother your well, skin. It's sticking to oh, and the air conditioner. The air conditioner is around. <laughs> it's all getting stuck to my yeah. pants. Wow, this is so cool. Yeah, and so that's that. And if you look at like the difference, like mine is predominantly pink. Look at yours; it's predominantly blue, just by the way that we wound it. Huh. So. Um, and probably the way I stretched it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, that would be an interesting experiment to say, if you pull it this way, right, rather than this way. Yeah. What will it look like? Will it look different? I don't know. That's yeah. fun. And I discovered that um, there was one I had, and a girl I. I <laughs> For all big look. Trying to get it off. There's kind of a tie-dyed look, like a splotchy one, that when you when you stretched it, it combined the two colors to make a totally different third. That was somewhere in between. Oh, interesting. Like, I had one that was silver and, and a deep teal like this, and in the final project, it turned out almost like blue. And it was really interesting how the colors changed once you stretched wow. it. Out. So yeah, so, so that's that's that. That's the silk inky, and uh, so I think it would be fun to hear from our. From our viewers, if anybody else has used either Sinkalkies, Sinkalkies, Silkankies, or anything different that they have knitted with that yeah. isn't your traditional yarn or wool. Right. It'd be really fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there's those. And like I said, you can get these through Fragile's Fibers. And um, if you want to try your own, I'd love to see what you guys need. Yeah, we'll put a little link up there yeah. so that you can get right to them. Yeah. That's all we got for today. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Come check out our blog at wholeoutofcraft.com. And don't forget to subscribe at YouTube. All of your subscriptions count towards getting great stuff for you. Yes, they do. So, yeah. So feel free to go on either that or our Ravelry uh, thread and let us know what you've been doing. We'd love to hear about it. All right, guys. Happy summer. See you soon. Bye. Bye.